Well, I'm with the Bodgers today and we're making shrink pots. So we're having a great session and it's a good opportunity for me to try using the tools that I made in the last film. These bodging days are becoming very popular and we had about 30 people from Kent attending, which was great. And here's the raw material and I chose some birch. It's got lovely bark, slightly harder to work, but it does look nice. And the first job is to auger out a hole. Now my augering went a bit off centre. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Uh, and a nice sharp auger makes quick work of this. And Phil was busy here augering a slightly more ambitious shape. So he's got more of an heart shape there. And of course, plenty of distractions. An innocent looking van, but inside it's being converted. So you've got insulated roof, toilet, shower, kitchen units, you name it, it's going in. Even customized coat hooks, which I thought looked rather nice for hanging up your coat. Yes. Harry's trying to tell me how to use his camera. Crash my head, he's <laughs> shaking terribly. <laughs> But he wanted. Is it got autofocus, Harry? Yeah. So if I come in, yeah, you should hopefully. We be should fine. hopefully see. Yeah. And what we missed here, folks, is the fact that Harry was about a foot off the centre when he yes. came to the <laughs> other side. Yes, right. I wondered if that was. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, Harry, that's a bit better, Harry. Yeah, looks about the same size all the way around. Unusually, having started off looking. Did you regrind that chisel for canolin? Uh, uh, it, no, I got it for this canolin, nice um, little set of second-hand ones, old marbles. Oh, and, sweet um, that is. Yeah, lovely. Boxwood handle. Yeah, lovely. I actually got these after our last shrink pot day. I started looking out for some because I thought I, I wanted in canol because I was only had out canol. And um, I, no, I, they, just ground, I, I just ground, the one I had, I just ground it. I just cut it off with a yeah, in fact, you know, one yeah. millimetre blade. Okay. Voila, we have oh, the a a full a range nice plum colour tool. In a plum coloured. <laughs> it was time to use my tools. I'd made them to leather covers for them. Anyway, quite effective. I did struggle a bit. I did say the collars I felt were a bit small and they work, but I would make them with larger collars. I would also actually make the tips of the tools a little bit more pointy or a bit more rounded next time to make it easy to get round. But they did do the cutting and they made quite a nice cuts top and bottom so that I could then use my grooving tool. And that seemed to work quite effectively. I think I got the, the angle of that pretty good actually all in all. So yeah, overall fairly pleased with um, Mark II, as I say, slight little modifications. But that's always learning and that's, I guess, progress really. But it did make a nice groove, as you can see there, for getting my base to the shrink pot in. <laughs> They are nice, they're lovely colour, aren't they, with it? Yeah. Yeah. How high did they go up? If you lift your trousers a little bit. Yeah, nice. Booty size. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. The geomers work? Yeah. Yeah, lovely. So this is the final clean out of the groove. And as you can see, you've got quite a nice deep groove for my base. Um, so that will shrink around the base piece and hold it in nice and firmly. As usual, lovely catering facilities, splendid cake being made there, and it was very tasty. And we had lots of dogs this time. And of course, mention food, you see all the dogs coming out. So yeah, very nice dogs. Now, quite an interesting little thing going on here, making curtain hooks, actually for the camper van. And quite, quite clever, really, making curtain hooks out of sections there and using a bit of knife work to clean them up. And it does make quite a good little curtain hook. So it just shows what you can do. Apply your mind. Rather clever, I thought. And it saves buying them and would look far more interesting, far more bodgery. <laughs> I used some elm for the base and just trimming it here. It took a lot of trimming with a knife to get it to fit. But patience pays off. And look at this lovely bit of hedge laying here. Our host had been busy laying his hedge around one of the fields and it did look very nice. And here's our little friend, the donkey. It's a rescue donkey enjoying that nice field. Trying to fit the base at the moment and being very difficult indeed. Make a new one. <laughs> yeah. Take too much How off. How tight have you got to that then? Yeah, Fairly tight, but um, probably not you think you're as tight as I'd like it to be. <laughs> but yeah, it's, well, see it's close. 
feel I should be able to pop it in under there really and strong. push it. It's very sturdy. I did finally get the base to fit and actually quite pleased with the fit as well. So hopefully the main body will now will shrink around that and make it a nice watertight pot. And here's another one being done. And <laughs> we were considering a, a go with a chainsaw to hollow out one. One of my friends did that, but it was too far gone, I think, with a piece of wood concerned. There are lovely crocus all around, and I noticed this bumblebee having a lovely time collecting pollen, going from plant to plant, and um, really swinging around. Lots of other things to see, lovely shrink pots there, and as usual, having lovely chats with friends. Well, we've had a jolly good day making shrink pots, and everyone's been making some really good pots. Some of us second time round, so probably a little bit better. I chose to make one out of birch wood, so this is my finished pot. And I'm obviously leaving the bark on because I think it's quite good fun. And I've got a reasonably good fitting base. So I possibly should have slimmed the walls down a little bit more, but I'm pleased with it. So one more to add to my collection. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.